Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussed about sweep. Remember, we talked about aspect ratio, then we talked about sweep, we talked about this parameter separately. But when you are doing a design, you need to know if they go together, what is the effect? Whether it's 1 plus 1 is becoming really 2 or it is becoming less than 2 in a symbolic manner, that is whether we are having right synergy or not. Because you may like to have aspect ratio more to get lifting characteristic better, L by D better. You may like to have a sweep more because you want to increase the critical Mach number. You know, this MCR is increased if sweep is increased. And I'm talking about high subsonic airplane. Because for a supersonic airplane, whose free stream Mach number is already more than one, the critical Mach number has no meaning, right? Because what is critical Mach number? It is that free stream Mach number for which, for the first time in the airplane, at some point, the Mach 1 has been achieved locally, right? So as we increase sweep, the critical Mach number increases. And also we have seen this critical Mach number depends upon sweep, T by C of the aerofoil, the aerofoil itself, right? The critical Mach number depend upon sweep, T by C, aerofoil, etc. Right. But when I talk about sweep, and in relation to high speed, that is supersonic, I'm talking about supersonic, as I mentioned, then the critical Mach number has no meaning the way you interpret here because free stream already supersonic, more than one. There we give the sweep for distinct reason. We try to see that the sweep angle is such that m cos lambda is less, the normal component is le less. So you'll have lesser drag, but it also cost you lift loss. Okay. So what is the systematic way of contouring the wing leading edge? You understand what is Mach cone, right? And Mach cone mu is given as sine inverse one by m infinity. Please revise from your book and try to understand what is Mach cone. I'll just glance through it. You know that if I am moving with speed more than velocity of sound, in time t, the disturbance which moves with the velocity of sound, this is Vs into t, will be covered, but vehicle being more than the speed, vehicle speed being more than the speed of sound, the vehicle will be here, so the another will come like this, you know, because time has elapsed, so this will go larger, and if you see this line, if you do a tangent, and this angle is the mark angle, right? That is physically what we understand, that disturbances are within, confined within this, June. Right? And that relation mu is given as sine inverse 1 by m infinity. And of course, m infinity is more than 1. That's why that angle is oblique. So what is the best way to handle is, if possible, that if we have a configuration like this, you calculate the mark angle 
mu here and this is you could say if this is the mark cone and if you could manage the leading edge within the mark cone then you have every possibility or you are having a subsonic leading edge okay but it may not be always possible and in, in contrast if your leading edge is outside this mark cone then you will have supersonic leading edge supersonic leading edge the problem is there will be lift loss because you know cl is cl incompressible by under root m infinity square minus 1 so as you increase m infinity the cl or the cl alpha that reduces so one way is you try to put the leading edge within the mark hole but it's always not possible because this, uh, this will be too demanding you have to really stretch the wing toward the central axis not possible all the time mostly not possible so for a high supersonic case what is done is they handle it at an airfoil level what is done is use pointed aerofoil it's a loose statement back statement would be used supersonic aerofoil which have pointed nose but it also creates its own issues but that is the direction okay there are series of supersonic aerofoil a lot of base work is done database is available which are relevant since we will not be focusing more on supersonic airplane I will go back to Soon I will try to go back to low speed and subsonic airplane, but I thought I must mention this so that you get inspired and read more. My lecture for this course level one is almost like showing you index of a book for a designer, what they should know, what they should know, how to integrate, right? Okay. Now, since we are talking about sweep back, the general question comes to young students' mind. They always want to move forward. They don't like, young people do not like to go back, you see. You see, the scenario has changed. Gone are those days when a neighboring country apparently perceived higher number of military power can dictate with us. Salute to our soldiers who has given right impression that we have, we have no knowledge of moving backward when it comes to defending our country. That is what is youth of today, India's youth today. So naturally they ask a question, you are talking about sweep back, what is sweep forward? You see this is sweep backward, let's say this. I'm assuming aerofoils are appropriately staged and sweep forward will be something like this. So instead of taking this back, you're taking it forward like this. Because as far as M cos lambda part is concerned, that will be true here also, the normal component will be less. The advantage, one apparent advantage one would see is that for a sweep back case, the flow has a tendency to go towards the tip. So this tip area, the boundary layer grows and it is prone to tip stall. One of the factors right so the sweep back will ensure or encourage tip stall
But for a forward CPC, the, the tendency of flow to come towards the root. So here, the tendency for root to stall first, then the tip. So here, root will be encouraged to stall first. Which pilot will like it? Okay, that gives you an indication that you are entering into a stall area. This is one of the defense for a forward sweep because otherwise it apparently didn't make much of a difference. Then there was a debate that for a forward sweep may face a problem of, they call it arrow elastic divergence. I will not go into detail, but I can tell you what does that mean in a very layman sense. If something is forward, suppose when it was swept back, and the elastic axis, the axis about which if we apply the forces, then it will only do bending, no torsion. Right? Okay. That is the, that locus of point is called elastic axis. Now, the moment you do going forward, there is a suspicion, possibility that this wing may infinitely go of increasing its attitude by a twist, by twisting the wing nose up. Nose up means angular attack is increasing, so stall and all these things happen and it can just go out, which is less probable for a served bank wing. Of course, the materials are there, limiters are there, so that is not an, really an issue. But historically, people are following a step back. You will find such thing being added in unmanned aerial vehicle. Okay? And then also you can expect one wing swept forward and another wing which is swept back. Oh, this is. That is, instead of both the wings swept back, this wing could be swept forward and another wing swept backward. That combination is all theoretically possible. You do not see much of a difference, right? Please understand when you talk about the aircraft, it is just not wing shape. Okay, you have to make sure the pilot, maintenance, visibility, all these things has to be integrated to say, oh, this configuration is okay configuration, right? You will also see how feedback has been taken to advantage. It came automatically. Imagine a situation if you are making a wing and putting the vertical tail here. This is the wing and vertical tail here. So if you really want this vertical tail to be more effective, you sweep the wing. So if you sweep back, Vertical tail becomes more effective. Which vertical tails? There are vertical tails if you are putting over the wing. Right? For different combination, you may do that. Also, you see that if this is the airplane and you are putting a pusher, the engine is here. The moment I put a pusher, you see that the tendency of CG coming backward, right? CG coming backward, we say tail heavy. Right? So to make it stable, we like aerodynamic center of the wing to come backward, and that happens by sweeping the wing. So the speed may not be a criteria. The criteria is you want to draw the aerodynamic center aft because the tail has become heavy. 
the whole scenario of today's aircraft development has changed because today the focus is unstable doesn't mean uncontrollable if by making an aircraft unstable you can control it and finally it gives you a better objective fulfilled do that that is the philosophy so all these concepts we are telling they stand alone is okay but when they are integrated with different different requirements and different different expectations you'll find at some point this concept is okay this point at some point this concept is okay it's not a generic uh, statement that this configuration will be better in a general sense now the question which i was discussing we have a natural love to increase aspect ratio which often troubles the structure group we have a fancy of making the wick look uh, the wing look very agile by giving sweep back sweep back if i try to add this what is the consequence that is exactly what i was telling will 1 plus 1 always give 2 symbolically because we love to increase aspect ratio we love to have sweep back what happens if sweep back is there you know the tendency of flow to go towards tip so immediate worry is tip stall high aspect ratio again alpha stall reduces so sweep back and high aspect ratio this combination will lead you to a trouble do you understand sweep back flow will try to come towards tip high aspect ratio the alpha stall reduces so this gentleman tip stall will get more elevated but as human mind if still you want some combination of aspect ratio and a sweep back the best way to handle is you see that at tip there is some twist twist the wing at the tip that is if is creating a problem of tip stall then you try to give a twist at the tip so that net angle of attack at that region is lesser by the amount of negative twist you have given to the wing and that is called all aero modeler use this concept washout if you want to increase the local angle of attack here let's say wash in just now i use the word twist if we talk about twist we need to first know about the lift distribution over the wing that is very important so let us first discuss about the lift distribution over the wing and in that connection we will first talk about taper ratio and you know taper ratio is the ratio of tip cord to root cord and taper ratio ct by cr and typically if the wing has elliptic lift distribution and at a low speed distribution then induced drag is minimum this you know from airplane performance one course for untwisted unswept wing this statement is strictly valid for a low speed it's important untwisted and unswept wing 
typically the wing platform will look like an ellipse. Let me draw. Right? Practically. And a leaf distribution will be something like You can refer to any book. These things are available. This is just part of revisions. It's typically elliptic wing, and you could see that it's not so easy to manufacture an elliptic wing. Just to give you a number, if I have same aspect ratio, rectangular wing, and same aspect ratio if I am going for an elliptic wing, Roughly 7% benefit in induced drag. In induced drag, you get over a rectangular wing when you are using elliptic wing, around 7 to 8%. But the manufacturing of elliptic wing is not so straightforward. And if you see in during World War, I don't want to write this term, World War II, Supermarine Spitfire, the Spitfire used almost elliptic wing. Whatever we are discussing, understanding, we implicitly take oath that our knowledge should be avoided or we should not create a scenario where our, our knowledge should be used for destruction of humanity or universe. That character every designer need to have. Of course, that doesn't mean if you are in trouble, you won't be able to defend yourself, right? Typically, it is seen that if you take rectangular wing and taper ratio around 0.4 to 0.5, if you keep, it's almost you get similar advantage as far leaf distribution is concerned uh, as you can have through elliptic wing. Okay. Since we talk about twist. How can you use the twist aerodynamically? Fundamentally, we know if I have a wing, I have a constant chord, right? And a wing having tapered chord. The moment I put a constant chord, I'm unnecessarily making lift near the tip large. As I put more lift at the tip, I am nearing towards more vortices. And also structurally more bending moment. But since we are talking about elliptic distribution, I will talk in terms of, if it's a constant chord, we are unnecessarily loading the tip. Instead, you reduce the load here. So one is, you do taper ratio. You actually reduce the chord here. So, lift load at that portion is reduced, okay? If you have rectangular wing only, you don't want to go for taper, then at some portion here, you have to give a negative twist. Maybe 10%, so that your, this area is not as loaded in terms of load as this was, because you want to avoid Induced drag, because the induced drag is dependent upon the pressure difference in the top and the bottom surface. So I am reducing it, right? So I have to give a negative twist. So here, aerofoil was like this, I will give like this. You see, this was the aerofoil, I'm negative twist I am giving like this, for some 10 percent area. Then what is twist? Geometric twist. This is what I explained was geometric twist. So let me write, it is the 
actual change in aerofoil angle of incidence usually measured with respect to root aerofoil right how much you have to state it is measured with respect to the root aerofoil i can do a twist like this down negative which i call wash out i can also increase which call wash in right so that is geometric twist i can also give a twist which is proportional to the length as length is increasing the twist is proportional to the length local distance where i am giving so twist could be proportional to the length so linear twist but you see on blackboard it is so easy to tell wash out wash in think of when these are to be manufactured in the workshop how much you are bothering the person who are manufacturing first of all whatever tools they are giving they have to have a manufacturing process they have to be process to measure it validate it so much of effort goes on so use all these twists and all absolutely when required don't do it for fancy if we are bothered about stall we want to avoid tip stall there is another way of handling it is what you call is aerodynamic twist when you talk about aerodynamic twist the designer is more focused he wants to ensure that the stalling property improves or in a sense he wants this man to root to stall first then the tip because his aileron etc are working there so what is the best way to do is use an aerofoil particular chamber here lesser chamber you use here so here the chamber is lesser compared to to root aerofoil and you know as you increase the chamber the stall angle reduces so at the root i have put highly chambered or foil getting a cl max also but at the tip i am putting a arrow foil with lesser chamber so the stall angle here is more so for a angle near the stall angle this gentleman this area will stall first but again blackboard it looks fine how do i maintain continuity on the wing surface when you are putting different different aerofoil uh, having different chamber there are construction issues construction smartness is required if i get a chance i will definitely demonstrate how we do in our lab when you design our unmanned aerial vehicle of nowadays we are designing 40 kg unmanned aerial vehicle so you could see almost similar things are happening right you could appreciate that what i am trying to do initially i am i am trying to give you some idea about physical phenomena and then try to drag you towards designer's perspective through numbers for example if somebody tells me how do i get an average number for what sort of a twist is there the simple rule is you take the average of them as a designer to start with okay if somebody ask with what aspect ratio i should start conceptualizing a design i say if it is a transport airplane takes 8 what sort of a cl alpha take 5.5 per radian but when somebody ask me what sort of wing loading i say hold on we will be talking about wing loading maybe in next or later lectures but we are very close to coming to 
finding out thrust requirement, thrust loading requirement, wing loading requirement, which are extremely important part of it, designing of an aircraft. Uh, my sincere advice, please revise airplane performance one and performance two whenever you find some connected material being talked. Read textbooks, Google, approach Google uncle and get your queries, use forum. And finally, you will understand that from blackboard to your field, the design concept must stay. You should not stay on the blackboard or your notebook. You should stay with it. Then only you are a designer. Thank you very much.